Hi everyone, this is Shamin, the founder and lead DJ marketing consultant and trainer at Sky DJ Agency. And today's topic is going to be a different approach. Um, I would say an approach I'm trying to tr try out to help you understand better on how to communicate better on social media marketing platforms like Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, or even YouTube. So let's get started. Today's topic, I've picked out two platforms, two platforms that I really appreciate as a business owner who conducts uh, training and courses. We host events, um, share insights, right? Um, try to get businesses or rather try to have a touch point with people who are following us on social media or even on platforms like PTX. The question is, what's your business USP, unique selling points? And notice that I did not say unique selling point without the S, it's a plural form. So you should have more than one USP for your business. So how many USPs you might ask? I would say as many as you can, but focus on three to five USPs. Uh, for your business. What do you think are some of the uh, business USPs uh, for PTX and Eventbrite? So I actually listed them out and I wanted to give you point by point but I thought that it was actually easier um, to just list them out. Okay, so I have nine points here and let's talk about it one point at a time and why I gave a take to each platform. So um, firstly, you must be allow me to create an event and it should be easy all right so i'm just going to say this ptix allows me to duplicate an event really easily but the uh, the information that i need to put in um for example like i need to re-upload my event uh banner image that's something that i do not need to do on eventbrite so it's so much easier to use on eventbrite i would really give eventbrite a plus for this think of it from ptix perspective if they allow us to have that feature basically when i duplicate an event on ptx and the banner images are automatically kind of like replicated or it's already there i don't have to re-upload it's going to help their server space um quite a bit if they are going to link back to the same uh image path if there are no changes to the image right so um that's something that i think is important because it's going to help me manage my events so much better um update them with the right images or even like just duplicate the images on the go. So if I'm on my mobile, I can't actually duplicate the events because I don't have the banners on my mobile, right? Whereas for Eventbrite, I could duplicate it, do the changes very quickly uh, or and, and, and change the date and things like that, okay? So uh, on the go. The second thing is allows me to build my event followers. Eventbrite only had this feature really recently. PDX had this platform this feature right from the start. When I started in 2016, um, because it was a relatively new platform, they were pushing out like our group quite vigorously. So we managed to build our following. Right now, uh, over time, of course, people have unsubscribed because uh, they have said like PT sends too many emails. And for us, because we lease about, we started with two courses a month, but now we have like six courses or more a month. So they find that it's too regular like they are receiving too many updates so they unsubscribe but we still have 715 uh, right now 700 plus uh, followers on pdx so that's a good thing i think because as an event organizer if people are interested in my event they should be able to follow me and they should be receiving a notification when i publish an event pdx gets a tick Number three, allows me to change the event date and time on my own when needed. You might be surprised, PTX do, does not have this feature. I always need to email them to change the event date and time. For example, like I may change it today. I may say like, okay, uh, change of plans um, because of another engagement that we have. We have to push this um, event like by two days or a week or there's low signups. I need to push it by two weeks, three weeks. So I actually need to email them each time I, I want to change the event date. I think if nobody has purchased a ticket, I should be given this uh, function as an event organizer. Uh, don't look at it as a point where uh, it benefits the event organizer only. If you're the platform owner, think of it this way. It's going to help you streamline your uh, support team. You don't always have to entertain this kind of things like change of event date, change of event time that people can't change because of the limitations of the platform. 
it's going to help you save money. You can charge less. You can transfer those things to other things. You can be more efficient in other ways as a platform, as a business. Right? These are things that as a platform, as a business, if you hear from the end user, people who organize events very often, it will actually help your platform so much more. For this, I'm going to give Eventbrite a take. Fees and platforms. You might think that Eventbrite is really cheap. Just look at 2% plus 79 cents. Okay, PayPal charges about. Okay, I would say about because it depends on how much I think uh, is charged through Eventbrite. So they have different tiers for different amounts. But it's about 3.4% plus a 50 cents. Uh, for Eventbrite in Singapore, it might be lower than 2%. This is the US rates that I can find online. It's quite difficult to find their fees. So that's another thing as well. PTX, they list every country uh, fees on one single page. If you compare 3%, 3.4% plus 2% is already 5.4% plus uh, 79 cents and 50 cents. So Eventbrite is actually much more expensive as a platform if you lease on their platform. In Singapore, if it's 1%, then actually they are about the same. But it also depends on how much your event costs. Like for us, courses, our courses cost somewhere between like 380 to 400 plus for a one day course. If it's a two day course, it's 720 upwards. So these are things that as an event organizer, if I'm hosting courses, that's going to be my main consideration. How much are you charging? And most of the time we would not absorb this fee and this fee is actually translated back to the end user who wants to join the course. Okay, so for overseas attendees, we won't be able to help them much. They have to buy a ticket um, via PTX or Eventbrite. Number five, awareness of my events, analytics and ability to embed to my website. Uh, both platforms gives us analytics, but I must say, sometimes depending on, I guess, the course name and the traction to the topic, uh, the, there's a very vast difference. So if I were to up, upload an event on PTX, sometimes it's not discoverable at all. Like at the end of a few weeks or a month, when I check back on analytics of people who have came to the event page, it might be less than 10. So I'm not sure what's wrong, but that's quite bad. For 10 reach, I mean, if I post about it on Facebook, I get at least like 50 to 100 reach without even promoting. Uh, but I must say that PTX has a promote feature uh, on their platform, but it hasn't worked out. I tried twice or at least three times, $12 each time. Not much traction and traffic from that. I I've seen the listing, I was doubting it, but I thought I would try it. Always provide, if you have a wonderful feature that you think that it's going to work well and every event organizer is going to jump on it. Think about the effectiveness as well. Think about how event organizers are going to feel when they try it out and it doesn't work. Okay, so uh, for that, I mean, that's just an additional point I'm elaborating on for point number five, but both platforms allow embedding to my website. I prefer the way that Eventbrite allows me to embed, but they charge more. So if I want the feature to embed this event to my uh, website, Instead of like 1 to 2% plus 79 cents, I need to pay more, like 5.99% uh, or more. So th that's a new, relatively new feature that they rolled out like uh, 12 to 18 months ago. All right, so one to one and one half years ago, they, PayPal just rolled out. So people who do not need these features pay lesser. So in a sense, it's a, it's a good move uh, for the business, I think. It does attract a big crowd of people who are more price sensitive on the fee platform charges. Point number six, ability to add images and embed my videos. Um, I must say both does, but PTX allows me to upload the image and embed it. That means the video shows up if you are familiar. The videos does not show up. It just shows up as a link on Eventbrite. Okay, so for this point, I'm going to give PTX a tick. So it's not that Eventbrite doesn't, but it's not as easy to upload to the event description area. I'm not sure why, but the videos just appear as a link as well, which is not exactly useful because people seldom click on links out to a video. But if you have embedded it, it shows up well. Um, people would click on it because of the thumbnail that's there and the topic that they see. Um, so we are all visual people and I'll give PTX a take for that. Number seven, support for inquiries how fast. Typically, I get my tickets, my inquiry ticket, my support ticket uh, to PTIX. I get a response within two to four hours if it's within working hours. So if I email them at like 5 or 5.30, I might not get a reply on the same day. I have to wait till next morning. So long as I email them during working hours, like between 
10 a.m. to 6 p.m. if I'm not wrong. And I'm going to give PTX a tick for that as well. If I'm right, support. Don't think I get a response very fast. So that I'm going to give PTX a tick as well. Let's go to point number eight. It gives me sign up for my event. So bottom line, if you're providing a service, the end user should be able to sell the tickets. Um, the people who are, who are event attendees should find events that they want to attend. So I must say that for this, I would give both platforms a tick reason because I think both of them do give us signups. Um, for Eventbrite, I must say they drive us global traffic, meaning that we have people from Philippines, India, um, Malaysia found our courses and they do sign up. Okay, There are people from Malaysia that found our events on PTs but they don't sign up. The people that they attract are very different. So people who go on Eventbrite are really looking for events and courses to attend. I have even heard of a participant, Singaporean, who actually said that she goes to Eventbrite for everything. Like any courses that she wants to attend, she'll go to Eventbrite to look for it. If there are so many more people on Eventbrite, I'll make sure that my content is updated and I publish my schedules, update and make sure that they are accurate. I would say Eventbrite does a better um, does better on that right now. Okay, in 2016 to 2017, PTX did it really well, but now actually dropped. But I'll still give both of them a take because it still gives me signups. Point number nine, email notification for sale of tickets. Eventbrite does that for both free and paid tickets, but PTX does not do that for both free and paid tickets. So something to think about. Because of this, right, I did not list free ticket on PTX anymore. So it's all paid tickets. Because if we don't receive a notification, we will not be able to respond uh, accordingly as well. Because sometimes we have some questions to make sure that they are signing up for the right course. Okay, so that's all I have for you, uh, nine points. So what do you think? As a business, what are their USPs? I must say PDX started off well because they probably got a swing of votes with the feature of uh, building followers. But when you don't have certain features in place, um, it might lose you uh, people. They actually do a manual tagging. So if I were to upload an event on PDX, there will be no categories assigned to the event until like a few days later, three or five days later, sometimes maybe more, there will be categories uh, tagged to the event. That's when people can find your event more. So there are times where they actually forget to tag. The traction is inconsistent and very low. Like on Facebook, if we were to post anything, sometimes it might reach like a few hundred people even. It's also cheap on Facebook to promote the event, whereas PDX, they charge $12. I did it at least twice, one for a client, one for my own event. It didn't work. I might have tried more than twice, but these are two things that I remember, two particular workshops that we were trying to, events that we were trying to promote. So what's your business USP? So what you have to do as a business um, after hearing about PDA and Eventbrite is to understand as a business, what are we looking for? As an event organizer, what are we looking for on the different platforms before we decide to choose um, a platform? So this is what you can do. Okay, I came up with a very simple list. Uh, as a business, you can come up with this. I mean, in each field, you need to list that up. So I came up with this list. Come up with a list of your three to five competitors. A lot of our clients, uh, and able to tell us who their competitors are, list out your USPs. You should at least have three to five USPs, okay? Even if you are selling food, say for example, laksa, um, you should have your USPs as well. Is it taste? Always, f &B clients always tell me, it's just about the taste, there's nothing else. There's also customer service, right? Price points, um, location. Do you, I don't know, have some reward system? Okay, the reward system actually does get people back. 10 shots for free laksa, something like that, along that line. Just an idea, I'm not saying that it's a good idea or it's definitely going to work, but I'm just saying that list out your USPs as a brand. Ask yourself, what's the extra value you can provide? What I mean for this, which is linked to point number seven, is try to compete on the value that you can provide as a business, even if you are in F&B, retail, or service line like us as an agency, what's the value you can provide rather than comp competing on price? I always use this example. For our courses, we are not the cheapest nor not the most expensive. So for one of our courses, like for Facebook, you would find cheap ones, 100 plus, $200 per pack. 
um, to as expensive as five, six, seven hundred dollars per pack or even more. So our price range is three hundred sixty for one day course, and we are in the middle, right? So we are not competing on price, but what kind of what value can we provide? Um, is it location? Is it uh, value adding before uh, as much as possible before someone signs up, right? And is it the trainer profile credibility, right? and maybe free content even or infographics content things that are visually appealing videos like this okay so these are things that you should ask yourself what's the extra value uh, proposition that you can provide as a business to your paying customers or clients what's your story so I'm, I'm going to elaborate more I, might, I may have mentioned this in my previous video I'm going to elaborate more on what's your story with one of the uh, fish soup store that I, I used to uh, go very often. Now I go less often because of location. I would say that they have been more expensive. You know, the person's value, his story, he, he hasn't communicated it much. Okay, so the reason is because there's no time as a hawker program. As a brand, as a business, you need to communicate your story. I can't emphasize this more, especially when we're talking about social media platforms. So if you have any questions at all, uh, remember to comment on them below. Uh, we'll try to answer them. But uh, I'll dive deeper into what's your story uh, in our next video. So do, do subscribe to do follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, especially YouTube if you are looking for long form videos like this. So you'll be notified. So press the bell button so you'll be notified when we upload new videos. So point number five, how can people get to know you? A lot of, I, I, I was actually quite surprised but I understand where business owners come from. Um, they they always want the ROI up front. Like they want the agency to tell them what's the ROI on this. I don't mind spending, uh, you know, I don't mind uh, paying you like $2,000 a month. But can you bring me in, like can you bring my business $6,000, $7,000, $8,000, dollars a month? So sometimes... Uh, it's not immediate. So brand value, brand positioning, these are not immediate things that you get. You might need six to nine months or even a year to uh, communicate that. So, but think about this. How can people get to know about your business? Uh, what are the different platforms? But also measure which are the platforms that work best for you. So if one day, Eventbrite is going to drive so much more traffic than PTX, we might, we might decide not to uh, list our events on PTX anymore. So those are a few things that you need to think about. Number six, are you communicating value, your values as a brand? What do I mean by that? So for us, uh, small class training, hands-on, these are things that uh, we, we try to try as best as possible um, to give to participants who want to learn, right? And if you know we all learn better with hands-on. So how much hands-on do you get? How much attention do you get from the trainer if it's a really big class? So uh, especially on our paid courses, we keep them small um, so that you get the most out of this. Okay, so are we communicating our values as a brand? So that's for you to decide, but if it's done, uh, you should consistently review it every quarter as well. You should hear from your customers whether or not they, they get these values as well. Um, are they understanding it the way that you are communicating it? Sometimes it may not match. Okay, point number seven. Um, do not compete on price, but build your credibility. So build your credibility. At the start, you might need to compete on price a little bit, but over time, as you build your portfolio, portfolios, your credentials, uh, your testimonials, your reviews from participants, clients, um, customers, that's going to build your credibility and always share that online as well. Number eight, invest in your online presence. Whether it's social media platforms or website, you need to invest in it. Why do I say invest? It's because you might not see a immediate ROI on it, but when you have a really appealing uh, Instagram account, okay, or Facebook page, people are gonna compare it to your competitors as well. Uh, one of the participants that attended our courses said this, um, she's a tuition teacher and the parent called and asked what's your Facebook page URL and she does not have a Facebook page and that's when she realized that how important it was. So for us, um, people came to the class telling us that they, they went to search for our Facebook reviews just to check and read 
on them. And when we knew how important it was, we screenshot those reviews and put it on our website, our Eventbrite, our PTX pages. So these are things that you need to understand um, on the unique selling points that you have as a business. Um, sometimes when you're just starting out, you might not have a credible online presence yet, but build on it. Okay, so when you have these things in your hand, then you're more confident because you know who you're trying to attract. Okay, so that's another thing that uh, we need to think about. So once you list everything out, okay, so I'm going to tie it back to social media. You need to communicate your unique selling points as a brand on these platforms in the form of photos, infographics, or video contents. So you need to think, or is it, articles right on LinkedIn on Facebook you get to write those so these are things that as a brand you need to think about and you need to work on and you need to communicate your story you need to communicate your values on social media platforms so USPs are one of the I, I would say one of the easiest ways for brands to communicate their values and attract uh, the customers that they are trying to attract that's all I have for you today I'm Shamin from Sky Digital Agency and uh, if you're interested to learn more about email marketing, Instagram, Facebook, okay, we have about eight courses right now that are skills which are credit eligible. In about six to nine months, um, majority of these courses will not be renewed and but we will still offer them on our website. If you'd like to sign up, do join us um, this year. If you have any questions at all, remember to comment on them below. Thank you so much for watching this video. Um, thank you so for, for sitting through the entire video. If you have any questions at all, um, please comment below so that it will actually uh, help us um, to create more content like this so that we know that we are engaging you with the right content. Uh, remember to subscribe, give this video a like, a thumbs up and we look forward to seeing you at our next video and we definitely look forward to seeing you at our next workshop. Oh,